All right, hello everyone. What is going on? DSP here. Welcome to the daily update. Today is uh, Friday, October 16th, 2015. And I got a few fun, interesting things to talk about today on the daily update. As you know, I've cut back on streaming significantly. I am not live streaming every day anymore. I'm only going to be live streaming special events, premieres, conclusions, and the like. Certain games I will be live streaming all the time. Others I will not. And as we move forward, it's going to be a little bit of a learning process of what works well for a live stream, what doesn't. And uh, I'll be taking your feedback on that. So everyone who has an opinion on should Phil live stream this but not live stream this, please feel free to contact me via comments on the video, via Twitter at they call me DSP, via email, darksidephil at hotmail.com. I've been taking in an incredible amount of feedback this past week, and it's going to translate into some good stuff, definitely. So uh, that's why I'm doing this daily update, because I'm not doing a pre-stream, because there's no stream today. No streaming this Friday, and in fact, it's looking like I probably won't be streaming again until possibly when the new games come out this week, the conclusion of Life is Strange, the conclusion of Tales from the Borderlands. <clears throat> of course, I'll be playing the Street Fighter V beta later this week. Well, next week, I guess, a, a week from today, or actually it's the 22nd, so six days from today. And, of course, the, the premiere of Assassin's Creed Syndicate all, all next week. So, there'll be a lot of streaming next week for sure. Okay? But if you want the full skinny, <clears throat> I strongly recommend you check out my podcast, uh, Hate Live, from last night. It's over on my YouTube channel, The King of Hate Vlogs. It's live. And to my surprise, it got over 5,000 views overnight. Which I didn't expect uh, that much in that short of a period of time. Apparently, people were really interested in getting caught up and hearing what I had to say and seeing a podcast for the first time in a month. And it was a very informative podcast. I explained all the stuff that's been going on recently, the stress I've been under, which kind of translated into me being pretty negative over the past couple of days this week, which I apologized for. And, you know, moving forward, I'm going to be a lot more positive, or at least I'm going to strive to. I am only human, but I will at least take your feedback uh, and listen to it and respond in kind by by you know, saying, okay, valid points, and, uh, you know, time to move forward positively, right? So please check out the podcast, excuse me. And uh, now, let's talk a little bit about some new stuff for today. Today I'll be playing The Witcher 3 DLC, Hearts of Stone, yet again. I'm liking this DLC a lot. I'm liking the variety in it. I'm liking the fact that it's not just combat, it's not just standard Witcher 3 gameplay, but you've also got some good narrative and story-based stuff in it. And it's a lot of fun, and I'm going to be doing that on my first session today of gameplay. And then later tonight, I'm going to be playing more Talos Principle. Uh, you know, some people have been saying that for these daily updates, I should take a gameplay video and talk over it. They're like, that's what everyone does on YouTube. They don't do, like, vlogs. Instead, what they do is they take a gameplay clip and they talk over it. Um, I mean, I could do that. I really don't see the value added in that. I want you to be, you know, obviously listening to what I'm saying in the video. If I've got gameplay playing in the background, it's going to be incredibly distracting. You know, like what would be the added value of me playing the Talos Principle gameplay clip right now and I talk over it? I don't see any. It just seems to me that a lot of people don't think that they can hold attention if they just have a video of, a, of them or a dashboard or something. So they play gameplay and then they talk over it. I know who you're talking about. There's a few people like I know Review Tech USA does all the time. All his videos are pretty much a gameplay clip from a random game. And then he does like a, a commentary over it that's to totally unrelated to the gameplay in the video. But I don't see what the point is of me doing that. Unless someone can explain. And again, I'm taking your feedback. So let me know. Is there value added? What I would have to do is basically take a gameplay video and edit it so that there's no volume in it, and I just play it while I do these daily updates for the days that I'm doing them. But I, again, I don't see the point. I'm just saying, but uh, but let me know what you think, okay? Um, but anyway, yeah, let's talk a few a few updates here for you uh, coming up. So number one, I just want to let everyone know I haven't been mentioning this recently because I've been very busy with a bunch of other stuff, and it took a while for the October st or the uh, September stuff to be done with. But as of uh, you know, a few days ago, I processed all of the patron uh, perks for the month of September. Meaning everyone got their accounts upgraded on the forums. Some t-shirts were mailed, private videos were made. Now someone actually did just message me yesterday with information about a t-shirt. So I'm going to try to mail that out over the weekend. Um, and so understand that, that if you were a September patron and you just responded 
today or yesterday or a couple days ago to my my message that I sent over a week ago. I'll get to it, but you know I already did the batching for this month, so it'll be hopefully by the end of the month I'll be able to go through those and get that stuff divvied out and, and on its way to you if you need something mailed to you, etc. Okay, but. What I want to announce today, I announced this last night on the podcast, uh, is the perk, or not perk, excuse me, the goal. Only one goal. I think the problem here that I've been doing with Patreon, I'll be honest with everyone, is that I, I'm too split, split apart. I'm promising too much. And I think that really the focus should be on one major goal a month. I was having like multiple mini goal levels of I would do this montage and then I would do this and then I would do a marathon. And it just, it was number one, taking up too much time in my opinion. Away from, especially now, this time of year with all the games coming out, you're going to want to see me play the new games, not stop every day to do a new montage or whatever for Patreon, right? That's number one. Uh, but number two, it was too confusing. What's all these goal levels? Did we reach the funding for this one? Did we not reach the funding for that? I'm going to try to make it more streamlined from now on on my Patreon account, which is patreon.com forward slash darksidephil. I'm going to do one major goal a month. So if we hit our major funding level for the month, which is always 1250 bucks, it always has been since I started in February this year, uh, we'll do a, a special event. <laughs> so for this month, the month of October, today's the 16th. We've got two weeks, exactly two weeks, to hit our funding goal for the month. Uh, right now, it looks like we may, but I don't know because a lot of people did up their pledges last month in order to hit that goal so we could do our Halloween special, which, by the way, is going to happen on October 31st of this month. And I want to remind patrons, please nominate your horror games that you want to see me play in that marathon because by the end of this week, I'm going to close off that nomination thread on the kingofhate.com forums and I'm going to begin the poll where people will now be able to vote, okay? So, getting back to the point. For the month of October, if we hit that funding goal in the next two weeks, I'm going to be doing another marathon. This is going to be a first-time marathon, something I've never done before, completely unique. It is actually taking a chance, but I want to see how it goes. I am going to do a Rock Band 4 mini marathon. And the reason I'm doing this is because I received a promotional copy of Rock Band 4 and a wireless guitar for the game in the mail unprovoked like I just got it out of nowhere yesterday there was a package on my front doorstep I'm like what the hell is this this giant long box and I opened it up and the only thing inside of it was a paper that said this is from the marketing department of mad cats <laughs> great I, I yeah it could have been because earlier this year I filled out a survey for machinima telling them what games I planned on playing and this was one of them but it's it's very confusing because the game came out over a week ago so why would they mail me a copy of the game a week and a half late I don't know, but I got it. So I said, why not turn this into something fun? Why not do something unique and different uh, for the viewers, for the patrons that I've never done before? So if we hit that top goal level of 1250 bucks in the month of October, we've got two weeks to hit it, uh, I will be doing a marathon of Rock Band 4 either in late November, early December. And the reason I put it like that, because in late November, I want to do a Thanksgiving week special of fan appreciation and cooperative gameplay. Multiplayer basically in everything. So think Halo, think WWE, think Star Wars Battlefront, Call of Duty. Uh, you know, all the games, the major games that are coming out in the next few weeks. Oh, Middle Gear Solid Online as well. All those games that'll be out and, you know, I, I want to do co-op ga gameplay with the fans. is like almost a special event that week of Thanksgiving. And I don't know how much time that's going to take, so I don't want to say, Oh, I'm going to do this marathon. Oh, well, by the way, because I promised it, now it has to cut into our special event. I don't want to do that. So... It'll be fun. It's going to be, like I said, either late November, early December, if we hit the goal level. The way it's going to work, I'm going to be playing the game first with just the guitar, just to get readjusted and refocused and, and, you know, get into the groove of things again, because I haven't played Rock Band in several years. I played Rock Band 1 and 2, by the way. Those were the two games that I actually played, and I played Guitar Hero 1 through 3. Uh, then, once I, I get used to playing with the guitar on, like, a normal difficulty level, I'm going to do some vocals. I'm actually going to start doing the vocals, too, and then I'm probably going to up the difficulty level. So I'm going to be going through the game multiple times, you know, multiple difficulty levels and even doing vocals. And it's going to be with face cam. And yes, it will be live streamed. This will be one of those special events that gets live streamed. Uh, so it's going to be fun. I think people would love to see me do this. Something completely different. I've never done this before. Uh, and the reason I'm doing it like this is sim simple. It's one live stream. So if there is a copyright issue, right? It's one stream versus if I did a full playthrough of this game. And then all of a sudden, you know, I start getting multiple copyright strikes. It would be, oh shit. You know, what am I going to do now? Uh, my channel's getting screwed up. So I think what I'm going to do is make this one stream, test the waters, 
see if this stream turns out fine if i don't get copyright issues or content id issues then maybe i can you know do separate videos and upload it as a playthrough but i'd rather test the waters first with this mini marathon okay this would be perfect opportunity to do it so uh yeah it's cool it's a good idea uh it was perfect timing for me to get this out of nowhere to say wow this is a perfect idea for the month and i certainly hope that uh you know people are excited for this so if you want to contribute if you want to you know see this marathon happen uh if we hit our 1250 dollars funding level for the month we will do it so patreon.com forward slash dark side phil uh for as little as a dollar a month you can get awesome perks like text shout outs in my videos for five dollars a month you get to both nominate and vote on games and polls for ongoing projects for example Right now, the people who pledged $5 in September are nominating the horror games, and very soon they'll be voting on the horror game or games that I'll be playing come Halloween. So, that is the advantage of doing it. That is the advantage of being a patron. You have tremendous power over these special events and projects, okay? So, please consider doing it if you haven't. It also obviously allows me to continue to do this full time. It allows me to upgrade my equipment. It allows me to do tons of stuff. Uh, right now, I am trying to raise extra money for a new camera. I need about $400 more from the $300 or $350 that we've raised already this year. And I'm hoping that maybe we could do that by the end of 2015. Okay. All right. Enough patron stuff. Now I want to talk a little bit, a little different subjects. Two people tweeted me about this this morning. And I said, you know what? This will be a good thing to quickly address uh, in my pre-stream. So let me go ahead and do that. Uh, not pre I said pre-stream when it's not a pre-stream. In my daily update. See, I'm so used to it being a pre-stream, I called it that. <laughs> um, Halo 5. Many of you know, Halo 5 is coming out in less than two weeks. And uh, it's actually October 27th. It, it's being released. And a lot of hype around this game, of course. You know, being that it's from Microsoft. They advertise the living hell out of it. And, you know, the big controversial twist this year is that it looks like master chief may be the villain or not it's probably a bait and switch where at first you think he's the villain and then he's not but you don't play as master chief for the entire game which is a difference for at least the mainstream halo series right so all this happening all of a sudden ladies and gentlemen some youtubers youtube gamers bigger people of course always the bigger people right not the little guys not the medium guys the big guys uh, apparently have gotten the promotional copies of Halo 5 early, over two weeks early, and they're releasing playthroughs of the game. So we're not talking, oh, a few, you know, a few matches of multiplayer or whatever. We're talking, they're playing the campaign of the game, and it's going live on YouTube. Uh, and some people messaged me about this and said, Phil, what do you feel about it? How do you feel about someone getting a game two weeks early and getting basically the up on everyone, the one up on everyone? Of course, they're monetizing their videos. They're making tons of money off of it because they were lucky enough to get early copies of the game. All right. Listen, I mean, you guys know my feelings on stuff like this. I very much am against people getting these advanced copies for multiple reasons. Number one, because it seems like when the mainstream news outlets seem to get them, a lot of the times they review these games without actually taking the time to flesh out all the content of the game, especially games that have major multiplayer components. How can you review that game in advance? You can't. How could you actually review Halo 5 in advance when half the game is multiplayer? You can't. You know, but th this is what happens when you get these advanced copies. You get people who work for media outlets who have to rush through the games to try to finish them early so they can get their review out, right? It has to hit... The, the, the internet before the game uh, releases in stores so people know what your review is early, right? And then in addition, yeah, there's people who are getting these copies of games way early. And it would be one thing if they used that to make a review and the review was re released. It's another thing if you're doing a full playthrough of the game early before anyone can even get it. That's, you know, think about that. And let's face it, these people are basically been chosen to be the elite. We are the gaming elite who Microsoft likes... And so they send us the game early, we get, we're probably making tens of thousands, and I'm, I'm serious, they're probably making tens of thousands of dollars off of these early advanced playthroughs. Um, and because of the views, I'm sure everyone who's a Halo fanboy and is dying for this game is probably going to go over there and check it out. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. Now, you may be surprised at my reaction to this, because you might think that I'm about to rant and say it's unfair and it's, an, it's a ridiculous practice, and for YouTubers like me... Uh, you know, I lose out. It's true. All that is true. But the bottom line is that 2015 is very different from 2008. And let me explain. In 2008, when I started on YouTube, it was the Wild West. 
No one knew or thought that you could do gameplay videos with commentary over them and make money off of it. No one even thought that you could get it and even get any viewership doing it. I was one of the few during that time period who just tried it for the hell of it. And somehow, you know, through chance, through luck, through whatever, my popularity blew up on YouTube. And people were like, holy shit, it can become popular. And then people began to monetize their gameplay videos. And people said, holy shit, you can make money doing this. And then, once it got popular, once people started making money on it, game publishers, game developers started looking at that and saying, hmm, you know, we might want to embrace this, even though some companies seem to be afraid of it, we're going to embrace this and we're going to say we support people who do this because it's basically free promotion for us. And yeah, of course, the YouTuber is making money on the game as, as well, but at least we're getting promotion for our game. And I think what we've seen concretely <clears throat> over the past five years is that a lot of games that maybe wouldn't have gotten a lot of attention have become viral hits. I mean, look at games like Five Nights at Freddy's. Who the shit would have played that game if it weren't for YouTubers and streamers who played it and basically made it popular, right? So, this is what these game publishers and companies are realizing now. Holy shit, if we can get people to play our game, we can get popularity and free promotion out of it, and, you know, awesome, let's do it. So what's happening more and more, this actually happened with Metal Gear Solid 5 back in, in September, is that chosen people are being given copies of these games early and being given legal permission by the game publisher to do playthroughs of these games early. Is it a fair practice? Absolutely not, especially not for people like me or, or anyone who does gameplay footage, right? And you want to play the game on day one and you want to give that, that raw... Uh, you know, new game experience to your viewers when the game's already had a full playthrough on YouTube for two weeks. And that's what I mean by the difference between 2008 and now. In 2008, the reason I got a lot of popularity on YouTube is because I was the guy, I was known as the guy who goes out and buys the games on release day, plays them on release day, plays them like crazy, and beats them within a few days. So if you want to see a full playthrough of a new game early and know if you want to play it or not or buy it or not, you go to DSP. That's not the case anymore. There's no way I can even do that because I don't have these connections. I'm not a huge YouTuber who has all these promotional connections and has all these agreements and things in place with these companies. I don't have an agent who goes out there and contacts game companies early and says, gee, if you give Phil a copy of your game early and you let him play it, you're going to get attention from it. You know, there was a time. You know, we're talking back 2010 to 2012. That could have been the case. If I played a game... Right? I could showcase a game that maybe other people never would have even given the time of day, but things have changed. That's not the case anymore. So, that's what's happening. And you might think that I'm going to sit here and rant and rave about it. I'm not. I'll be honest, it's, it's, this is reality now. You know, in the past seven years, game publishers and game companies have realized that they can get free promotion from YouTubers. So this is going to happen more and more. Every new game that comes out, you're going to hear that some YouTuber has it early and is being allowed to play it early. There is no more fair market competition. There is no even ground when it comes to this anymore. What it really comes down to, okay, is who are you going to watch play that game? Do you want to watch this YouTuber who got it two weeks early? Do they have enough uh, entertainment value? Do you find that their gameplay level and their commentary level is, is, is good enough for your tastes? And if it is... You're probably going to go watch them play the game, right? But is it more of, well, you know what? They got it early, but who cares? I'll go ahead and I'll watch, you know, my favorite YouTuber play the game whenever they play it. And I think that's more of the factor of what it's going to be. It's going to be more of the personality of the person, the gameplay level, the entertainment factor, the overall enjoyment you get out of the playthrough versus just playing the game early. The, and th that feeling of, I'm playing the game on release day and getting attention because it's release day views is gone. It really is. It's gone from YouTube because you're going to have these people who get it in advance. And it's hilarious in a lot of cases because if you remember last month, I forget who they were called. It was something like Kinda Funny or something like that. Whoever it was that got the early copy of Metal Gear Solid 5 and played it on YouTube got massive amounts of criticism. Basically, people said, you suck. Like, you're terrible at this game. You're not any good. And it's hilarious that this is the, the person or the group of gamer gamers that Konami decided to give Metal Gear Solid 5 to uh, because he's, the person's terrible at the game and people were watching it just to see the game and they could care less about the commentator and the person playing the game because they sucked at the game. Now keep in mind, I am by no means saying that I'm good at Metal Gear Solid 5. I don't think I am. And in fact, who knows if I'm better or worse than the person who got the early copy. I don't know and I don't care. That's not the point of what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, here's proof positive 
that just because someone's getting the game early doesn't mean that their playthrough or their experience with the game is going to be the best one, right? And I think that's what ultimately what's going to happen is you're going to have those casual YouTube viewers. They're flocking to YouTube to see the game early just because it's the game early because they're all hyped for it. And they're going to go to the people who get the game early regardless of the quality of the playthrough. But then you're going to have everyone else who gets the game at the normal release date and they're going to be able to get their normal viewership because people don't, you know, I don't care about people getting it early. I want to see this particular person play it. So there is still a market, certainly, for people to play these games, even if other people have gotten the games two weeks early, right? I could care less that someone got Halo 5 two weeks early. I know that when I play Halo 5, it'll be my own playthrough, it'll be my own unique spin on it, my own take, and I'll judge it for itself, and I know that I'll have people who come out to check it out, regardless of the fact that the game's been spoiled for two weeks. So I'm not worried about it. I'm not. Uh, and I don't think anyone should be. Just understand, this is going to be the climate of the future. This is 2015 gaming on YouTube. It's nothing like it used to be. It's not a free marketplace anymore. It's not. Because this is what happens when big bucks get involved. You get promotion. You get advertisement. You get marketing. You get special collaborations. You get special arrangements behind the scenes. And you get this stuff happening. And it's not anymore about the gamers. Quite honestly, it's not. It's not about someone being a legit gamer it's about promotion and selling copies of games that's what it is so you know it is what it is and you can either accept that or you can say well fuck it i'm not gonna watch videos anymore you know <laughs> i guess i could i could throw say well fuck this i can't get that kind of attention i used to get anymore because of these special partnerships or i could say screw that i'm in this for the games and i'm in this to share my gameplay experiences now i don't care about making money and cheap views on day one and I can continue to do what I'm doing. And that's the attitude I'm going to take. I'm going to be positive and, and not stand here and get all angry and rage or whatever. I'm going to move forward positively. Which is honestly the, the best way to approach life, right? I'm happy that I'm here and I'm going to be sharing all these gameplay experiences with you. Despite the fact that I might not become filthy rich doing it. Oh, <laughs> Holy shit. Someone who does YouTube doesn't care about becoming filthy rich, right? But then again, I listen, I understand there's tons of people who do YouTube just for fun. And that's the cool thing about it. Those are the genuine people. Those are the people who deserve the real attention, in my opinion. And you could disagree, but that's my opinion. Is It's the people who, who love it. It's the passion for what they do. A passion for gaming. A passion for sharing gameplay experiences, you know, as a, something artistic rather than something commercial. That's me. That's my philosophy. That's always been my philosophy, right? All right, everyone. So that is it for my daily update. I hope that you uh, enjoyed it. I'm going to get started with gameplay now. See how far... I'm, I don't know if I'm going to finish this Witcher 3 DLC today or not because I don't know how long it actually is. I'm moving into the third section of the, of the DLC, but I don't know if there's like an extended period after it or not. We'll see. But I'm excited. I'm liking it. I hope that you've been enjoying it too. And uh, that's about it for the daily update. Thanks everyone for watching. Please continue to give me your feedback. Again, in the comments of the videos, uh, on Twitter, via email. I'm taking it all in, I'm weighing and balancing it, I'm, I'm daily adjusting stuff based off of your feedback, that's what I need. I want this to feel more like an interactive community than just, you know, a one-way street, you know what I mean? And uh, that's what's going to make this successful, ultimately, so. Alright, that's it. Peace out, everyone, thanks. See you for gameplay.